the biggest killer of working with the moon like this to manifest is self-doubt. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the Lavender Lifestyle. It's Eileen. Today, we are talking all about manifesting with the moon, the power we have to create our desired reality, and how to use the moon as a tool to amplify that. So with us today is Yasmin Boland. Yasmin is an astrologer, a moonologer, and a best-selling Hay House author. For the past two decades, she's been mixing astrology with the divine feminine, the law of attraction, meditation, sacred accessible moon teachings, chakras, chants, angels, and more. So here's our conversation with Yasmin Boland. Hello, Yasmin. Welcome to the Lavender Lifestyle. I'm so excited to have you. Thank you, Aileen. I'm thrilled to be here. Yes. So before we get into all of the moon, I want to know a little bit about your backstory. I guess, what drew you to astrology and studying, working with the moon? Okay. So I uh, started my career as a journalist, mainly because I love writing. And along the way, I met an astrologer and she ended up giving me about two crates of astrology books. I was like, just read those. I'm like, okay. So I just started reading them. And she, about about a month after I'd started reading them, I was, and I was really interested in them, um, she showed me how to read a chart. And I just got obsessed, basically, is all I can say. Um, it literally just took over my life because literally I was a journalist, I was a TV producer, I was very happy with my career, I actually loved my career, I still love my career even more now, but I didn't think, oh, I need to change or anything like that, although journalism was kind of going a little bit shady. Um, and it just took over my life, is the long and the short of it. <laughs> right. And how long... What were you studying it before you became an astrologer? Because you were still doing journalism, right? Yes. So I I sort of studied it for probably about two years. But I mean, I really studied it. I mean, I know you do astrology because I've been, you know, a little bit. I yeah. also got like I got interested and I just read all these books and it's yeah. just it's a rabbit hole. So what happened to me was I I really did become obsessed and I was doing mm. like six hours a day of studying wow. and reading and researching and charts and all this. And uh, to, to actually what happened was that one day I, I was talking to a girlfriend of mine who was a very sensible Capricorn, as the Capricorns tend to be, and I said, look, this has just got ridiculous. Like I'm just all I'm doing is astrology and I'm a freelance journalist or freelance writer. I'm, I haven't, I'm not even writing any articles because I'm just doing this all the time. So we mm-hmm. took all my astrology books, we put them into two milk crates. I don't know if you have those crates in America, yeah. but those are sort of yeah. big square boxes. And we took them downstairs to the garage and we came back up and said, okay, we'll have a cup of tea, you know, just as well. That crazy chapter of my life is over. And literally about half an hour later, my flatmate of the time came home, came up the stairs, brought the boxes of astrology (laughs) books and plumped them down in the middle of the living room and said, I think these are yours. What are they doing in the (laughs) garage? And I was like, okay, universe, I can take the hint. And uh, at that point, I just went, you know what? And I just threw myself into it. And Mm -hmm. eventually, so I studied it really hard for about two years. And at one point, I got offered a column. And the astrologer that had actually taught me a lot said, you're not ready. So I was like, oh, okay. So I sort of kept going. And but then I started slowly over the next couple of years to put out feelers, and I just kept telling everyone, I want to write astrology. I want to write astrology. And that's basically what happened. And it all kind of went mm-hmm. from there. I'm curious, what is your moon sign or what are, what are your top three? Okay. So my three. moon sign is Capricorn. And okay. in fact, the moon is conjunct my moon as we speak. Oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, I'm a Cancerian, a moon child, I like to say. Mm, oh, wow. Okay. So let's start with that because I think a lot of people know their basics. They know their sun sign, their moon sign, their rising. So in the chart, what does the moon represent? 
Okay, so in the chart, the moon represents your emotions. You could say it's what feeds you and it's what you need. What is your moon sign? Mine is Sagittarius. Because I just did your chart based on the information I found on the internet. But of course, because I don't have your time of birth, I I can give it to you later. Um, Yes, yes, I'm a Libra sun, a Sagittarius moon, Gemini rising. Yes. And my moon, I I love to learn new things. I love to travel, explore. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So not to correct you, Mm, but it's not just what you love. With your Mm. moon, it's what you need. So ah. you need to travel. It feeds you yeah. to travel. You know, study will feed you. It's it's really like what it, it's what you need. The moon is femininity and the mm. breasts. And if you think of breastfeeding, it's the you know it's the thing that sustains the baby when it's first born. Like the moon is what sustains us emotionally. I see. So how does a Capricorn moon tie into you going so obsessive into? you know, studying astrology. Okay. Well, that's a great question. And because you understand astrology, you'll really understand this answer. So my Capricorn moon is conjunct my MC, which is the career Um, line. We all have an mm -hmm. MC and an IC. My MC Mm -hmm. is in Capricorn and my Mm -hmm. moon is bang on my MC. So actually when I came up with the word moonology, just one afternoon in Sydney, Australia, um, I didn't really, uh, you know, think about my chart. I just thought, oh, moonology, that's a, that'd be a great thing because I'm very, I was very interested in the moon from the start. And then, of course, I thought, well, hang on a minute, I've got my moon conjunct my MC. Of course, yeah. I'm going to be into moonology. So, yeah. yeah so that's that, that's that's what your public persona is. But would you say it's re- it's also related to your purpose? Well, I mean, yes and no. I mean, I would say purpose is always going to be more the nodes. Um, Mm -hmm. But as it happens, my uh, north node is in Capricorn. Okay, so it's all in that general area. Yeah. Okay, so let's get into the moon. Explain to us what is the power of the moon and what can the moon teach us? Okay. So I guess the first thing to say is that women have worked with the moon literally for millennia, like thousands of years. Uh, and, and men and women have worked with the moon. Um, I mean, we know, for example, that uh, 15,000 years ago, people were working with the moon because in France, there are beautiful cave paintings of the lunar cycle. And uh, the chances were that they were working out where the new moon was and the full moon was because they could see better at night. Uh, So it was probably quite practical because obviously 15,000 years ago you had to be pretty much in touch with all the seasons and, and so on. But, you know, we've been looking at the moon like that for a long, long time. Uh, But, you know, over the years, those 15,000 years, um, people have started to work with the moon and it became something that was very sacred and very ancient and it became something very, very feminine. So in astrology and moonology, uh, the sun is very masculine and the moon is very feminine. So even though I always say pretty much Two of my very favourite people in the world are my husband and my son, and they are both men, obviously. Um, So I'm not anti-men in any way, shape or form, but the moon does have a feminine aspect to her. And uh, so women have traditionally worked with the moon for thousands and thousands of years. And women have the power to create. Now, we know that because we give birth. So, you know, we know that women are very creative. Um, And uh, also we have the power to create our reality. And there was a point, you know, this this working with the moon, in, in astrology, the men traditionally worked with planets now I'm not I don't want to be sort of gender specific you know obviously there may well have been some you know people who identified as men who but but were in touch with their feminine side and who worked with the moon and so on and but generally speaking if you look at the names on all the books of all the the famous astrology books through the ages up until about 50 years ago they were all men and uh, the women were at home doing their own thing 
with the moon and Venus and, you know, making their potions and doing their tinctures and all this. And it all kind of went like this and women developed their healing powers. And then about 500 years ago, uh, just as sort of, for one thing, medical information was starting to grow and the, the, the male, the patriarchy was getting more and more interested in medicine, uh, the patriarchy was going stronger, uh, it became illegal to do things like work with the moon. And, you know, we had the Salem witch trials in America where you are and we had witch hunts uh, across Europe. And right. there's no, there's not really any information about um, how many uh, women were killed, right. but it, it, estimates run between thousands and millions, which I know sounds like a lot, but there really are estimates that run from thousands to millions. And so all this information, bang, went underground and that was it. Nobody wanted to work with the moon anymore. Nobody wanted to, to do the magic anymore because you could get killed for it. Right. So whereas in the past, especially because it was a feminine thing, um, you know, the information would tend to be passed down from mother to daughter to mother to, to daughter, we stopped telling our daughters because we didn't want them to get right. it was a hanged or burned or, you know, drowned. Can and you touch so, on... Maybe I'm not that great at knowing the history of that time, but I don't even understand why that was happening. What was the shift and the reason well, that? Yeah, yeah, that's kind of the million dollar question, isn't it? Because, <laughs> you know, why would men not want women to be in touch with their magical Were powers? Were they becoming more mm, powerful? I wonder. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we can only surmise that they weren't comfortable with women mm -hmm. uh, being that powerful and being right. in touch with their ability to mm -hmm. bend reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and that's what it is. Like, again, like I said, I've been kind of stalking you a little bit because I knew I was coming <laughs> on here. And, uh, you know, I was seeing that you were saying about, you know, really what you need to do, create rea your own reality is decide what you want and go for it. And mm -hmm. that's what women kind of have always known. Mm -hmm. And we've had the power to sort of command things. And, and you know, like we got called witches for doing this. And um, funnily enough, actually the word witch in Old English, according to the legendary uh, American witch Starhawk, who if you don't know Starhawk's work, look her up, she's amazing, Um it, it, it actually comes from a word that means to bend and it's because women know how to bend reality. And so basically as it turns out, the lunar cycle, which is a monthly cycle, so in fact the word month comes from the word moons, moon, moons, month. You can use the lunar cycle as a framework for your creating reality right and you're talking about manifesting with the moon and the different moon phases right yeah really yeah. yeah yes um break that down for people who've never heard of this concept before okay so most people know the full moon mm -hmm. okay like even when we're little isn't it it's like oh mummy look it's the moon you know and the full moon and we know that the moon is there so what happens is over the course of a month, the moon goes from new to full and back again. So when the moon is new, actually you can't see the moon and uh, she disappears. And the moon represents the goddess and the feminine. So she disappears and then she slightly becomes visible a few days later at the crescent moon and then she gets bigger and she gets to the half moon the quarter moon it's actually called, but she looks like a half moon, and then she moves to the full moon. And, you know, obviously it's the interplay of the light of the sun on the moon. And at full moon, the moon is perfectly round. And then after that, which we just had the full moon, after that the moon becomes smaller again and just loses a bit of her roundness every night until she gets back to the new moon when you actually can't see the moon. And that cycle with the ancients, you know, thousands of years ago, it was seen as sacred and magical because you get 
the moon disappearing and then she's reborn and then she gets bigger and then she has this massive sort of moment of being full and then she starts to get smaller again. And it was seen akin to the cycle of life and death and rebirth. You know, it's like she disappears and then she returns. And, you know, working with the moon become like it, especially I think, In 2022, more and more people are realising about manifesting and about creating their dream life. Like you talk about create your dream life or, you know, live your beautiful, perfect life. You are the artist of your life and all that. A lot of people know that and a lot of people are starting to suspect that. And I think that um, especially with what's happened in the last couple of years with the pandemic and then like the post-pandemic period we're now moving into and we've had this thing called the big quit or the big resignation where people are just going, what am I doing? Like I don't want to do this anymore. I just want to live my life, which is kind of, again, what I saw you doing but a few years ahead of the pandemic. It's that sort of realisation that you actually have the power. But not everyone realises that and a lot of people have tried and failed But when you start to work with the lunar cycle, setting your intentions at the new moon and then offering it all up and basically releasing it to the divine Mm -hmm. or the goddess at the full moon, your life will start to change in extraordinary ways. And I would say to anyone who's watching, you know, if you've had any, if you've tried this, if you've tried to manifest, if you've been wanting to create your life and you just can't seem to get there, one of the first things you could do is actually start to work with the with the lunar cycle. So mm-hmm. set your intentions at the new moon. Sit down, like you were talking yourself, Aileen. It's just important. You just have to know what you want. Well, what happens if you sit down with a pen and paper at the new moon and you say, right, what am I going to do this month? What do I want? What do I want to manifest? What do I want to attract into my life? What kind of commitments am I making to myself for the coming month? You know, you can imagine that is a super powerful exercise to do. I mean, any day of the week. But doing it with the moon actually taps into something, I believe, extra special. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you need to believe in it for it to work. I believe there's a reason why women did this for millennia until it became illegal to do so and we stopped and it will change your life. And the reason why I think the whole moon thing is just gaining more and more ground since my my book Moonology came out in 2016 and it's still in the Amazon astrology bestsellers like five Mm -hmm. years later. Yeah. And it's not just because it's a great book. I love it as a book. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had a lot of help from my publishers, Hay House. Um, It's because women are reading it and doing it and going, oh, my God, this actually works. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think it, like we, we've we learned about manifesting law of attraction, but working with the moon taps into something kind of tangible. You can see it in the sky. It feels like there's a greater power helping you, right? So, so to recap, set your intentions at the new moon and then let's continue that. So, so when you get to okay. the full moon, then what happens? <laughs> so if you want to just go through it, so yeah. set your intentions at the new moon. You know, take 20 minutes, half an hour, whatever, turn the lights down, put on some beautiful music because, you know, it's about raising your vibration. Um, And I actually want to talk to you about the space clearing that you did with your Marie Kondo thing because that's really important, getting rid of all the stuff, you know. Make Mm -hmm. your altar beautiful. Make your living room where you're going to do this beautiful. Mm -hmm. Tidy up. Put some flowers. Put some oil in the diffuser, you know. Don't just, like, grab a piece of old piece of paper off the table and a pen and just scribble down your top 10 wishes like and think that's going to work it's not actually it's not about that it's about thinking right I am a powerful creatrix I am a powerful creator I have the power to shape my life so I'm going to set the scene and I'm going to visualize what I want. I'm going to make affirmations out of what I want. Maybe I'm going to do a vision board for a really big thing. And you just do it. It takes 20 minutes, half an hour. I do it every single month. Right. Uh, you know, and sometimes you kind of don't have that much to, you want to 
um, create. Some some months it's like I'm just going to do gratitude this month or, you know, I just want more and better or I just want to, you know, be healthier or whatever, do more exercise or something. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be always manifesting something. Sometimes right. it's just like I'm just so grateful for everything. Oh, that's okay, beautiful. So, you so you're that. saying you don't always have to be specific with your intentions. You can just... Well, how, well, what it are depends. You, if yeah. you've got a serious intention, be right. as specific as you can, okay. okay, and take time to visualize it, but not just on new moon night. Keep it, mm-hmm. you know, get a picture in your head and just visualize that at new moon and then keep visualizing it, you know, turn it into an affirmation. So say your, affirm, say your desire is to get a new job, okay, because, you know, that, that's a fairly common one. And uh, you just you write down, you know, my intention is to get a fantastic new job and then visualise yourself leaving the house, you know, full of bounce as you head off to work. I mean, assuming you're actually going to not work from home because everyone works from mm-hmm. home these days or, you know, visualise yourself at home on your computer in this job that's satisfying and wonderful and turn it into an affirmation as well. And an affirmation needs to be really like enthusiastic and full of life and and just sort of alive that you can say it and sort of throw your hands in the air. It's not like, oh, I love my new job. It's like, I love my new job and my new job loves me or something like that. And you just you kind of like keep put that in your consciousness. There's so many other things you can do. I won't go into them, but you could do things right. with crystals and oils oh, yeah. and baths and but just they're the basics. Mm-hmm. And then at the, the the when the crescent moon appears, that's uh, about three days later, four days later, just just sort of reiterate to yourself, this is what I'm creating. And remember, you need to take action steps. It's actually the law of inspired action. It's one of the universal laws. So just say you want a new job, do your visualization, do your affirmation, but also go online and start to apply for mm-hmm. jobs. Yeah, you know? take action. Yep. Take action. Before we go on, let's take a break to hear about today's sponsor. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Life can feel like an emotional roller coaster with its ups and downs. It's important to take care of yourself through all the struggles that life can bring. BetterHelp Online Therapy can help you navigate that journey. They will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist in less than 48 hours. I really appreciate getting a third person's perspective on my life. My therapist helps me see things in a new light and it can be really helpful. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online. The service is available for clients worldwide. You can log in and message your counselor anytime and schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in a waiting room like with traditional therapy. BetterHelp also makes it easy and free to change counselors if you don't like yours and you can cancel anytime if you don't like it. It's more affordable than traditional offline therapy and financial aid is available. So consider investing in your mental well-being. Visit betterhelp.com slash T-L-L, that's better H-E-L-P, and join over 2 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. Special offer for the Lavender Lifestyle listeners, get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash T-L-L. And then with the lunar cycle, we get, so we get the new moon, then we get the, the crescent moon, then we get the first quarter moon, which is when the moon looks like a half moon. And that is when the moon and the sun you will know, are at a hard angle. They're making a square to each other and there's a clash. So quite often what will come up then is a challenge. So it might be you apply for a job but you don't get an interview, say. So it's like, do I really believe that I can manifest this? Do I really believe I've got this in me? You know, you might get a little crisis that tests you. And so then your job is to sort of push through and go, you know, yes, I believe this. The biggest killer of working with the moon like this to manifest is self-doubt. So you have to be constantly believing in yourself, okay? And then we get to the, uh, we get the, so that's about a week after the new moon. About three days later, we get what's called the gibbous moon, which is when the moon is nearly full and it gets quite bulging. Right. And you sort of like all your hopes and dreams are in the moon. 
And, uh, and then we get the full moon, which is sort of the emotional explosion. Mm-hmm. And that is when one thing I did when I wrote Moonology was I really sort of prayed and meditated on how to use the, the full moon because I knew about the, the new moon. I knew about the magical women through the ages who will send out their spells and their wishes. You know, here in England we've got a place called Dartmoor, which is kind of dark and mysterious and quite witchy. And on the new moon you'd often have these people out there sending out their spells and so on, uh, which I'm not really a witch per se. Like I don't, I've never studied, you know, Wicca or anything like that. Um, but I was like, what, what about the full moon? I knew, I knew about the new moon. I knew about the traditions. And it came to me just because of actually time I've spent in India uh, at an ashram where I've been going to on and off for about 15 years. And it's an amazing, magical place of really like soulful retreat and, you know, nurturing right. and all about the goddess. And um, and I realised what it is. It's that the full moon we have to give it all over to the divine. So whatever mm. hasn't manifested yet, give it over to the divine and whatever okay. has, be grateful. I see. And so then the cycle continues. Do you want me to do the, the next bit as well do you, or you want to just talk about that? Um, yeah, so if you could go through it quickly. So at the full moon you release it, but then after you release it, what what happens before the so next So you new release moon? it, you release, yeah. if, if it hasn't manifested, Try and think what's holding me back? What is my Mm -hmm. resistance to this? Mm -hmm. And uh, try and just get rid of stuff. It's when you need to get rid of stuff that no longer Mm, serves you. And I I did want to talk about the fact that I saw that video about your 20s and you said at one point you discovered um, Marie Kondo Mm -hmm. and you uh, got rid of a whole lot of stuff. I I actually did something like that as well uh, in my 20s. And I had a woman called Karen Kingston who at the time had written a book about um, feng shui and uh, she emphasised the importance of getting rid of all your stuff, all the clutter in your life. And it's so important and that's one of the reasons why I think you did that and you had that massive um, shift. It's the same for me. I threw out 15 garbage bags of wow. stuff. And I remember just looking at it from my living room, looking at the pavement and thinking, oh my God, that's half my <laughs> you life. Know what? I'm overdue to do that again. Cause I did that in 2015 and I got rid of like more than half of my things. And it was wow. such a big energy shift. It just felt so clean and clear. And then, you know, as the years go on, things pile up again. So I, I do feel like you know, you have to do that every once in a while. Yeah, and I don't think that you can overemphasize the importance of doing that in mm-hmm. terms of manifesting, whether you're doing it with the moon or mm. anything else. You do have to release the stuff. But in yes. monology, the full moon is a great time to do it or, or just okay. after the full moon I is see. a really great time to do Letting it. Letting go. What you have is you have the waxing cycle and the waning cycle. So the waxing cycle is new moon through to the full moon, which we've just talked about. It's two weeks. And that's the time to really go for it and put your foot down and chase your dreams. And then as soon as you get into the waning cycle, it's time to go, (sighs) whatever hasn't manifested yet, make peace with it. And if anything's worked out for you, you know, share the information with friends and family and teach other women about how to do this. But on an energetic level, it's a great time to get rid of stuff. and. Actually, we're between houses right now. We, we're living next door to our house. We're renting next door to the house we own, which is being remodeled, renovated. And after watching your video, I thought that's such a good reminder. Before we move home, because our house is empty right now, before oh, yeah. we move home, we've got all this stuff here, all this stuff in storage. I'm going to get a big skip out the front. I'm just going <laughs> to throw the stuff that I no longer use away or I'll give it to a good home if it's nice or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to try and, like, have less stuff because it's so important. So at the full moon, great time to declutter just, you know, what what do I no longer need? I mean, especially now with Ukraine, any you know, any of my son's old clothes, you know, there's no point in having them stuffing up his wardrobe. I can give them to charity. People need them if they're in good condition and so on. And so then you're in the waning cycle. And so the the waxing cycle is about what's rising up. 
And then the waning cycle is about what's falling away. So what mm-hmm. are you letting go? You know, yeah. what have you learned about yourself? Have you learned that maybe you're holding yourself back? Have you got some negative beliefs that you need to release? Have you got some fears? Yeah. So it becomes this cycle where you kind of like you get to know yourself better. And so the disseminating moon, which is about three days after the full moon, let stuff go and share what you know. And then you get the the last quarter moon, and and that is when it, again when you might get a crisis coming up that you have to deal with, uh, but you know it's really about have you made peace with where you are in life, you know, and and can you be honest about what's holding you back, you know, just say you're trying to manifest, I don't know, a car, you know, do you think you're worthy of that car? You know, you, why, what do you think is holding you back? We, and the funny thing is we're all getting so much more self-aware. So we're becoming more aware of what's holding us back and what mm-hmm. our issues are. And so then we move to the, the last phase astrologically of the cycle, the eighth, fa- the eighth phase, which is the balsamic moon. And that is um, one of the most fantastic parts of the cycle uh it's it's about three days before the new moon and balsamic you know we all know you know balsamic vinegar in in the states Mm -hmm. yeah so balsamic we know vinegar but it actually means healing and Mm -hmm. soothing okay Mm -hmm. so it's a very healing and soothing time so it's kind of like make peace with where you are make amends love yourself more and just, you know, let go of any resentments or jealousies, you know, just say you've had an upset with someone that month, it's really the time to just really do that energetic clear out. And now what I also do, it's not in my book, actually, I, whenever we're going to do an, an, a second edition at some point in the near future. Um, but at the very end, you get what it's a non astrological phase, but it's called it's the ninth phase. It's the dark moon. It's you don't learn about it in so astrology right before school. the new moon. Yeah, and it's okay. literally at the end of the balsamic phase, but yeah. just before the new moon. Okay, mm-hmm. and just for anyone who's into astrology and learning, the new moon takes place when the sun and the moon are on the exact same degree of the zodiac. So, for example, we just had the, I actually can't remember what degree it was. I could look in my diary. <laughs> no, but, it's okay. But, yeah, it's when it, they're you know, literally on top of each other. Exactly. So, it's just okay. say it was 25 Virgo, then the moon is at 25 Virgo yeah. and the sun is at 25 Virgo. And then when you get the full moon, they're literally opposite each other. So, opposite Virgo is Pisces. You know, it would be, say, if the moon was at, uh, the sun was at 12 Pisces, then the full moon will take place when the moon hits 12 Pisces. So at the very end, just before the moon moves right onto the same degree as the sun, we get the very mysterious ninth phase, the dark moon. And that is like one of the most sacred, spiritual, feminine moments of the whole cycle and it's really I think something that we all need to start to become aware of it's when we just let it all go just mm-hmm. really it's like the last the final, chance the final the let go moon. yeah yeah so, yeah. so you're and, saying during that is it does it last one day like how long is that yeah <laughs> well the thing is in astrology because astrology as you would know is sort of like quite I mean I wouldn't say scientific but because people would jump on me for saying that but it's got it's got maths and it's got degrees and it's like zero degrees is the new moon and you know 180 degrees is the full moon because the ninth phase isn't really astrology it's more like folkloric from feminine traditions there are no hard and fast rules from what i feel and from what i've read but especially from what i feel i feel it's the end of the balsamic phase so Mm -hmm. just before the new moon so if the new moon takes place at three o'clock in the morning you know doing your night your dark moon work say at 9 p.m that night will be great it's just at the end of the end of the waning cycle and it's like the image i like to use um is you know when you've uh, you've had grapes on the vine, you know grapes are making wine or whatever, and then you know 
most of them being picked, but it's now the end of summer and there are some that have just withered or maybe it's actually it's probably even autumn, isn't it, when they just go brown and dry and you could just like crumple them to dust in your hands. And that's kind of like what we need to sort of release at the right. time of the dark moon, just crumple it all away. Anything that hasn't worked out, just let yeah. it go. Yeah. I love that this cycle of manifesting, it, it, it's half manifesting and taking action. And then the other half is all about letting go and releasing. I think a lot of people forget to focus on the releasing part. <laughs> we're always focused on the goal and going for it. And we're, I think a lot of people want to take action all the time. And, and you're telling us, no, <laughs> two weeks is about taking action. The other two weeks is about letting go. Yeah, there's, there's a couple of things that you said there which are absolutely perfect. So mm. I think the first point to make, you know, and and again, not to keep relating it back to you, but I saw that you took some time off the podcast because you mm, just had enough, yeah. you know, because it's really important, especially for women, to remember uh, you don't have to be on all mm. the time. That's a know? huge one for us to and remind it's ourselves. It's just the fast track to burnout. Yes. And so... Yes. By using the lunar cycle like this and working with the traditional ways, the wax, I I do a joke in my workshops. I go, waxing cycle on, waning cycle off. It's actually Mm -hmm. from a a karate movie. I think it's called The Karate Kid. And there's a guy in there who says, wax on, wax off. But I say, Mm -hmm. waxing cycle on, waning cycle off. In other words, be on in the waxing cycle and be off in the waning cycle as much as you can be. So I think that's really important, like, and especially for women. And actually, I saw you had Rebecca Campbell on your show. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Beck is a friend of mine. And she has has spoken a lot about uh, when women go into their masculine. And again, it's kind of like, you have to be careful how you express it. But in a nutshell, it's like, you don't have to be like a warrior all the time. Sometimes you can be the nurturer or the nurtured, you know? Uh, Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I I love that. Um, A question I have for people who know their moon sign. So what does it mean when the moon aligns to your moon sign? Because this is specific for each person. And you mentioned today is what is happening for you. So what does it mean? (laughs) Okay. So basically when the moon aligns to your moon sign, you're effectively having your lunar return. So, you know, like obviously you were born, let me see, I've got your chart October here. October 21st. <laughs> Let's see. Sun and Libra. So your um, sun is at 27 degrees of Libra. And by mm-hmm. the way, it's uh, obviously, you know, your sun is conjunct Mercury, the planet of communication. Yeah. So it's no yeah. surprise that you're communicating. So, The sun takes a year to go through all the 12 star signs, right? So, you know, you were born Libra, but if you'd born, been born like five days later, you would have been a Scorpio or then a month later, you'd have been a Sag or whatever. So the sun goes through all the 12 signs and then it returns to where it was when you were born. And that's why we, when we say happy birthday, we say Mm -hmm. many happy returns. May the sun return to the place it was when you were born many Mm -hmm. times. So by the same token, your moon, instead of taking a year to go through all the signs, it actually only takes a month, a moon. And so when you get your lunar return, for one thing, it can be a bit more of an emotional time. So don't be surprised if your emotions come up when the, when the, your moon, uh, when the, the moon in the sky aligns with your natal moon, the moon where it was when you were born. But also you can actually do something that's called a lunar return chart, okay? So what you do, and again, you have to kind of know a bit about astrology to do this, but you you may know enough about this. You've been studying it for a few years. So what you can do is you can cast a chart for the exact moment that the moon returns to the place it was when you were born, to to the degree of the zodiac, excuse me, most software programs actually have a lunar return, return, you know, option. And so what you do then is you, you cast that chart for where you are or where you were born and it tells you, oh, this is what you can expect in the month ahead. So, you know, if, if Mars is squaring Pluto in your lunar return chart, 
you know, Mars in your third house is squaring Pluto, for example, you know you're probably going to have a little bit of argy-bargy, maybe a few upsets, you know, a few dramas, and it just kind of like prepares you for what's ahead so you can try and work with it. And, you know, one thing people talk a lot about um, in, uh, in you know, these days is living consciously. And um, knowing your what's coming up for the month actually helps you to live more consciously. Before we go on, let's take a break to hear about today's sponsor. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Life can feel like an emotional roller coaster with its ups and downs. It's important to take care of yourself through all the struggles that life can bring. BetterHelp Online Therapy can help you navigate that journey. They will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist in less than 48 hours. I really appreciate getting a third person's perspective on my life. My therapist helps me see things in a new light and it can be really helpful. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online. The service is available for clients worldwide. You can log in and message your counselor anytime and schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in a waiting room like with traditional therapy. BetterHelp also makes it easy and free to change counselors if you don't like yours, and you can cancel anytime if you don't like it. It's more affordable than traditional offline therapy, and financial aid is available. So consider investing in your mental well-being. Visit betterhelp.com slash TLL, that's better H-E-L-P, and join over 2 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. Special offer for the Lavender Lifestyle listeners, get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash tll I, I just wanted to s- circle back to something because I, I forgot <laughs> it and I wanted to mention it. Can I just mention it, Aileen, because yes. it's really important. So we were talking about, you know, the new moon and the full moon and you were saying everybody focuses on the new moon, mm-hmm. you know, and we're all really into setting our intentions and sending our wishes out to the universe and all that. Um, you know, that is so true. And it's something I've seen in my work over the past 20 years so much. And it's such a good point that you make that we should also not just focus only on the wishes. The full moon is like the secret ingredient Mm. that people just don't even know about. They don't realise that there's this really important relationship between setting your intentions and then offering them up to the divine. It's the secret ingredient ingredient. I just wanted to come back to that because you mentioned that and it's just so true. I see. What about lunar eclipses, solar eclipses? I heard you're not supposed to manifest during that time. So what do you do? Okay. (laughs) So I disagree with that. Oh, you do? Okay. hundred percent. Tell me why. hundred percent. The thing is, okay. So basically with eclipses, the thing is that, um, what you have to do is you have to put it in historical context, okay? So just cast your mind back three or four, 500 years and just say you're a peasant tilling <laughs> the field, you know, mm-hmm. just turning the soil over or planting some carrots or something, and then suddenly <gasps> the skies go dark and the birds stop chirping and the dogs start howling and you're like oh my god what's happening and nobody there's no facebook to tell you that there's going to be a total eclipse of the sun it's just like oh my god what's happening and so people used to be obviously extremely freaked out by Mm -hmm. solar eclipses when the skies went dark yeah and then what they would do is that anything bad that happened afterwards, they'd blame it on that fateful day the skies right. went dark, you know. I see. And so eclipses had this kind of bad reputation. But I've been studying eclipses for more than 20 years now and, you know, touch wood, I don't want to tempt fate. <laughs> yeah. But actually they can really work for you. So when I was first learning astrology, I was actually coming out of a really toxic sort of abusive relationship and I had an eclipse on my sun at the same time as Saturn went over my Venus and I was like oh my god what's going to happen and I actually broke up with this guy but in the most explosive way in a very eclipse way eclipse energy is really powerful energy but it was the best thing that ever happened to me because Mm -hmm. it freed me up to then meet my husband so we could have right our sun and eclipses what you need to understand about them is they are um 
extremely powerful times but they're not to be feared for being powerful Mm -hmm. and they're very much about like whacking you back on track if you've gone off the track that your soul wanted to sort of follow this incarnation okay so how should we use eclipses or is it kind of the thing we should just be aware that it's happening and be aware that something big might happen Yeah, I mean, if you know astrology, definitely have a look in your chart and see where the eclipse is hitting your chart, especially Mm, so obviously because of my work with with the new moon and the full moon, I would say, you know, like set extra powerful intentions at the time of the new moon eclipse Mm -hmm. and do extra powerful release work at the time of the full moon eclipse. It's just like they're really the... I mean, I actually studied the work of a woman called Sophia Mason when I was first learning astrology, and she talks about eclipses and new moons, and the way she says it is they just turn the volume up. So her, one of her sort of things I just remember from one of her books was, you know, if you if you find some money in your jeans pocket on a new moon because your chart is getting triggered in some way, you might find a $10 bill. Right. If you find some money in your pocket on a new moon eclipse maybe you'll find a hundred or two hundred dollars do you know what I mean it's like yeah so everything's amplified yes I see I see so you recommend doing the same thing setting intentions and doing the just everything the same is just knowing that it's more powerful during eclipse time yeah and so like say for example what you do at the full moon eclipse because of the Mm -hmm. new moon eclipse we know we can sit down we can set our intentions we can do our visualizations we can do our affirmations get clear on what we we want and make our commitments to ourselves about the inspired action we're going to take over the course of the next two weeks but what about the full moon like meditate that can be a beautiful thing to do. Like back in the days when I was single, I would get up. If if the full moon was taking place, especially if it was an eclipse at yeah. 3 o'clock in the morning, I'd get up and I'd just meditate. And, you I know, see. I, now I suggest writing a forgiveness list. It's so, mm. like forgiveness. You know, we're talking about Marie Kondo yeah. and clearing out. Well, yeah. forgiveness is like energetic clearing out of I your body. I love yeah, it's very important. Yeah, and so do forgiveness lists. Look at what you're not releasing, what you need to release. Mm-hmm. And also I am a huge fan of chanting and it's more and more people are starting to get into it. I learned about it in India. And, you know, if you if you like a bit of chanting, I think it's becoming more popular because of yoga and people have come to know it through yoga. Just sit quietly and just chant you know you can just Mm -hmm. chant om or you can just chant om shakti which is to the goddess Mm -hmm. can you know in my in my moonology books i've got all the different chants you can do because i know people are getting more and more into it in in the diaries so just so what does chanting like what's the value what does it add when you're doing okay so i think that chanting is extremely powerful because it uses your voice Mm. and that activates your throat chakra Mm -hmm. and that's your will. So Mm -hmm. you're aligning your will. If you're chanting to the divine, you're aligning your will to your divine self or to the divine or to your higher self or whatever you want to call it. It's, um, It's not something that, you know, the heavens need us to do but it's something that helps us connect to our divine self and it's super powerful. In the pandemic I did chanting. I think I did it, I think in the end we did it for a year, a bit on and off at times, of chanting to goddess Kali Mm. who is uh, an Indian, a Hindu goddess, who's um, the goddess of destruction but she's also the goddess of uh, epidemics and pandemics. So we chanted Mm. to her and during the period of the pandemic, um, I don't know how you were, I was kind of okay for about the first year when I was doing all this chanting and then kind of went actually went on holidays and I got out of it and then I came back home and I didn't start it again and I really went down and mm. I always thought it was that chanting that connected yeah. me I think it that. raises your vibration it, yeah, I, so I recently much. did a podcast about sound healing and I I am a strong believer that your voice has so much power like we we can manifest sound through our voice like this is creation right now me just making sound through my voice and we forget that we are creating every day and 
So, so yes, I, I totally believe in that. And I'm, we're I'm so on the same that. page. Obviously. Yes, 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 we are. Okay. Um, so I think you shared a lot of actionable advice in terms of like how we can utilize the moon is what you shared. I mean, that that's like a basic level, but I'm curious, what do you do? Do you do this or do you have something else that you do like specific rituals with the moon? Like what else can we do? <laughs> So, okay. So the thing is that I'm a wife and mother. My (laughs) son is 15 and, you know, at school and we're busy like everybody. I'm a writer. I'm super busy like everybody. Mm. And what has been amazing for me is I do new moon ceremonies and full moon ceremonies on Facebook Mm. and Instagram Uh, every month. And I've done them for years now. Yeah. And it just keeps me on track. Like if I wasn't doing them, I know that one month out of two I'd go, oh, gosh, is that the time? I haven't finished that deadline. I've got to do this. I've got to run my kid here, do that, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I do that. And so I turn up for people and I do the ceremonies and we do them together and it keeps me on track. So I would say to anybody who's listening, who's like, you know, oh, yeah, I could do that. Get together with your girlfriends, you know, and say once a month we're going to do a new moon ceremony or once a month we're going to do a full moon ceremony. I like to do when I'm doing the full moon ceremony, I actually do stuff that I was taught in India for full moon, which is getting a little fire pit and uh, chanting into the fire pit. But if you can involve friends, that really helps you because it it's too easy to go, oh, full moon, damn, I forgot to do my full moon ceremony again, you know. Mm-hmm. Like do stuff with friends, keep yourself accountable, come and find me on social media. Right. You know, we'll that. We'll link your ceremonies to this podcast, yeah. It's so powerful to do it and so easy not to. Mm-hmm. Um, other things that I do um, – One thing I'm doing a lot of right now is getting my headphones and getting solfeggio frequencies. Do you know solfeggio frequencies? Yeah. And so they're the, if you want to search them on YouTube, you just look up like, you know, solfeggio frequencies and it will come with an HZ and there are various numbers for various things. Right. Yeah. And so that's how I'm meditating at the moment. And I'm finding that really powerful. And we were talking about raising your vibration. Right. So I find that really vibration raising. Mm -hmm. And I'm just listening to them all the time now. If I'm in the car, I just say, Siri, play self edio frequencies. And you're talking about uh, like those audios that are just one frequency. It's not music. No, right? I tend to or... I tend to go for the beautiful music. Okay. okay. And it's written it, it's it's actually slightly it's adjusted. Oh, yeah, okay. it's not like it's it's slightly different to um, regular music and the right. tones. Uh, you just if you just put in, yeah, you know, I'll have to look it up and listen. So if you, free, if you just go on YouTube, there's mm-hmm. more than you could ever listen to in one lifetime, and so they are really good. Mm-hmm. Um, I do another thing I think is really powerful when you're going through a difficult time especially I don't I'm not doing it at the moment thank god touch wood everything seems to be okay right now um but you know especially when I'm going through a difficult time um what I'll do as well is I'll do my meditation or a bit of yoga a bit of stretching something like that and then what I do is I get my cards my moonology oracle cards Mm -hmm. um which I've got here we I hope hopefully I do have a deck yeah, I do have Oh, one. good. Excellent. Mm-hmm. So, and I'll do a, a daily card and mm-hmm. I'll write it in an exercise book. I don't have it on my desk right now, but I write it in the same thing and I write the question and the date and I just see what I get and I just sort of let it inform me, you know, and I follow it. Like I feel like if you're going to do this, you have to take it seriously. You can't mm-hmm. just ask the question and then go, oh, well, pff, don't like that, never mind you know so like let that influence you okay. and and the other one other thing i do when if i'm really upset about something is i this might be a little bit specific but i'll just tell you cuz you asked me um okay. when i was in india i got this little square piece of metal with a beautiful sacred symbol on it called a shri yantra you can buy them online 
And if I'm really upset about something, I'll get some, like you could just get some ash or some what's called kumkum, which is this the stuff that they use in India to put on their third eye, which I mm-hmm. happen to have some of, or you could, you could probably even just, I'm not else sure what else you could use. You, you Maybe you don't even need that, but I just wash it and wash it and wash it in a bowl of water, just sitting there quietly. I I get the, the little metal thing and I put the kumkum on and I just put it like that, rub it in, and then I put a bit of water and I rub it. I just wash it and wash it and wash it to wash away what I'm going through to deal with my feelings. It's not about spiritual bypassing. It's not wash it away. It's help me deal it's with this, help me move through my emotions. Practice, and it's a visual thing that you can do, physical yeah, and tangible. It's, and it's really powerful. I uh, see. And I'm sure people could find, you know, you could probably even just use a plate, you know, mm. just a small saucer with a, in a big bowl of water and just with the intention of just washing it all away and you know a little bit of acceptance as you do it it's a bit like the full moon work when you kind of do your forgiveness list or you do your release work it's not about just wishing it away it's about accepting it and processing it you know at the full moon remember all our emotions come up that's why everyone goes crazy at full moon Mm -hmm. so you've got all your emotions at on the surface so you deal with them and you know I do that as well that's one of the things I do when I'm really upset is to just wash it away and just try and accept it and 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 let it go right and what is your advice for people who have you know you set your intention at the new moon maybe you go through a whole cycle and you realize okay it has not manifested or or I I feel like that happens often like do you suggest setting the same intention again and and even so I, I feel like people will feel like a little dejected if the last cycle didn't move forward. So, yeah. So I honestly think you keep asking for it until you no longer feel the need to ask for it. So Mm -hmm. one of the best examples I had of this was our house next door. And we found the house in February I was like, oh, finally found the house. It had, it was exactly what we wanted in the place we wanted. It even had sort of the right number because I'm a little bit funny about the number of the house and all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and, and we made a, an offer on the house and it got accepted. I was like, amazing. And then um, it was all sort of going ahead. And then there were one or two issues like questions about was there something funny with the roof? And anyway, so I, I kept manifest. I kept making my wish at new moon and then at full moon offering it up to the divine and then the owner who was 96 and had lived here for lived there for 57 years passed away and so we'd made our offer it had been accepted he passed away good old Seamus very Mm. cute man and in England, where I am, when that happens, it's something called probate. It goes into probate, which means that it can't be sold can't because the house. Oh. all the all Seamus's debts or whatever have to be resolved mm-hmm. before the sale can continue. Mm. It basically took us nine months to buy the house. So every month I would be like, I want this house. If there's something better, I'm open to it. Let the divine guide me and we go and see other houses and so on and so forth. And the result was that over the period of nine months, it's like we had found this house, but I wasn't sure. And that it was like it was put on hold for us. And we got a chance to look at lots of different other places while this place was on hold because nobody could buy it once it was in probate. No one could gazump us once it was in probate. And also just because of the way it worked out, literally when we finally got the house, uh, and I think it was September, is that is that nine months after January, it was literally the best time for us financially to have got the house. So it all worked out really well. So I just kept mm-hmm. wishing for it kept right. my mind open, kept my eyes open for signs because mm-hmm. that's really important and surrendered it every full moon, just like whatever, whatever's best for me mm-hmm. and my family, I surrender it to the divine. You know, it's so important to do that at the full moon. But I will just put a little caveat on this. I once got an email from someone who said that he had been um, actually doing what's called a novena, which is a kind of a Catholic 
prayer that you can do for nine nights in a row. And uh, he'd been doing this novena for something like, I don't know, a thousand nights or something. And and the girl still didn't love him. <laughs> so <laughs> you have to be careful, you know, when you're exactly if you're trying how do you to know get, when to let go? Yeah. And you yeah. also have to like know what is within and without of your control. Like right. buying a house, it's fine to to offer it up. But with a person, if you know, three years later they still don't want anything to do with you, you know, you have to yeah. have there's a bit of wisdom required. Let's put it right. like that. Right, right. <laughs> I see. Okay. Um, do you have any last thoughts that you want to share with our listeners? I do. I would like to say to all the, everyone listening and especially the women, because, mm-hmm. you know, the They're men are <laughs> doing pretty good. Yeah. Women, we have these amazing powers within us and we are powerful powerful beings and the best things we can do for ourselves for our mothers our fathers our sisters our brothers our children our friends is to step into our power and not be afraid of our powers because we were made to be afraid of our powers but we can change lives you know so if you're hearing this calling and you're thinking I kind of know that I have this ability explore it that's what I would say thank you so much for sharing um and lastly where can we find you online Yasmin so I do love a bit of Facebook you can find me on there under Yasmin Boland um on Instagram I'm planet Yasmin Boland and uh I have a little YouTube channel but I don't pay that much attention I'm bit I should pay attention to your the way you're doing it Uh, And my website's yasminbolan.com and my book is Moonology. Amazing. Thank you so much for being on the show, everybody. I'll link all of her links down below in the show notes. And yes, thank you. Thank you, Aileen.